hi there. So I wanted to share with you guys a little bit more about the puppies. Everything I'm about to share with you is probably things I've already said um, like throughout all of the live streams, all the days since we've had them. Each day I update um, the live stream on kind of how they're developing and how their personalities are emerging. Um, but I did want to compare them to each other a little bit so that for families who are um, looking for an ESA especially can see kind of the differences. And um, it's a little tough because um, as a whole, the litter is, they're really remarkable. Um, each of the puppies, the boys and the girls, um, these are the girls and the boys and the girls are all, they all really embody what makes a cavalier a cavalier. They really, really love to snuggle. You know, when we are kind of introducing the idea of socialization, um, we only really pet them with our fingers and we try to only pick them up when we need to and we'll put them back as soon as we're done, you know, with, whether it's weight checks or deworming or nail trim, we put them back with mom as soon as we can. Um, and so what's been really remarkable these last few days is when we go to put any of them really back with mom, um, they will, a lot of times, all three of them have done it, they will turn around and come back and snuggle with us. And um, it's just really incredible because especially for a family who is looking for an ESA, um, that's a really good sign um, for an ESA dog because what we need an ESA to be able to do, we need them to be willing and happy to completely focus on their ESA handler. And, um, you know, like even in our home here, when we have all of our ESA, so Daisy, Paris, Mocha, Vienna, we can be really anywhere in the house. And if they hear that we are distressed or something's going on, they will come from wherever they are in the house and be right at our feet. And oftentimes before the kids even realize that they need their dog. After reservations, when we know which puppy is going to which family, um, and we know which puppies are gonna be ESAs, we begin to really focus on bonding um, each puppy with their families. Um, even if you're not looking to have an ESA, we still provide you with those FaceTime opportunities um, because it cannot hurt to let your puppy get to know you. And um, we found, especially for kids, um, that the wait can be a really long wait and it really helps if they have um, those weekly FaceTimes to look forward to. And then for families who are a little bit more local, we're happy to have you guys over in lieu of FaceTime. Um, some families who are like semi-local, maybe, um, so we're located in central Illinois. So we've had families who live up in Chicago or down in St. Louis um, do like a, a hybrid schedule where one week we'll FaceTime and then the next week we'll do an in-person visit. Um, and so we're happy to work out whatever is best for you guys. FaceTime just allows us to reach more families. Um, and so that's why after reservations, we ask families to send us a slept in t-shirt um, along with anything that might help. So like a baby's blanket or a, a cat, if you have a cat or another dog, any other pets at home that, um, that your puppy is gonna be interacting with, you can send one of their old toys. Um, and what we do is we vacuum seal those and we only pull them out for FaceTime so that they only ever smell your scent when they are looking at you on the screen. Um, and then we put them away very quickly. Um, the idea there is that, um, you know, pickup day is gonna be when they are growing out of the litter mate phase, when they're kind of moving on from mom, they won't be nursing on her anymore. Mom will be kind of harder on them because she'll be trying to teach them, you know, rules and how to behave. They just, they're ready to be pets at that age. Um, and so, you know, Drew and I, we can't, we can't give them their own individualized attention all day, every day by that point. And um, so when pickup day comes and their family shows up and they recognize you and they can smell you and they hear your voice and it all comes together and we invite you in here and we have your puppy and they realize that they don't have to share you with any of the other puppies. And I think that's the biggest thing because until pickup day, they only ever really know sharing um, all of us with the other puppies. And so when you come over to pick up your puppy, they that's like their first experience of having their family to themselves. And so, um, you know, our, our goal here, this 
these whole eight weeks is to um, prepare them for the smoothest transition possible. You see Panda right here? So this is what I'm talking about with like how they approach us. Um, she's kind of like worked her herself into my hand like this. And you know, puppies who are more timid people, they won't do this. You know, and mom is right here and um, you know, when she's around, they'll oftentimes, if they want her, they'll put their heads up in the air and they'll be sniffing around for her. These guys, they have such a high affinity for people for their age right now that um, oftentimes, you know, we will put them back into the pool to be with mom and all of them have, at some point in this last week, all of them have turned around and come back to us and done exactly what Panda did just now, climbed into my hand. I mean, you know, we keep the socialization kind of minimal at this age but what we're trying to teach them or at least to show them is that um, people can meet their needs too if if Myra their mom is not available um, they can cry and Drew and I will show up um, we want them to to see that we will meet their needs too and they can depend on us and so you will see us on the live stream too um, if there's a puppy who's fussing and mom's not there um, we try to come over and pick them up and and kind of answer those calls so that they can learn that, you know, sometimes mom comes and licks them and sometimes it's people picking them up and snuggling them. And so we don't pull them out any, really any more than we have to. Um, and so that's why it's kind of funny that when we've been putting them back, they turn around and come back to us. But they are all really, really incredible cavaliers. Um, it would be perfectly normal for them to still be a little afraid of us. And so that's why we don't like to make too many judgments on their personalities before the two weeks because um, sometimes puppies will catch up to each other. All five of the puppies in this litter would all make really, really great ESAs. Um, you don't have to be using them as an ESA in order to reserve a puppy from us. Um, but we still do all that training for all of the puppies um, because it doesn't just help with the ESA features, but it helps with just like regular just general bonding. Like I said, our goal this whole time, this whole eight weeks is to, um, is to make for a smooth transition. And so we want them to be as comfortable with where they're going as possible. And so the big part of that is bonding them to you, whether you're gonna, they're gonna be an ESA or not. Let me bring Panda to you. So, the tricolors, as they get bigger, um, the their color, the black color, it tends to bleed a lot more. And so it's gonna grow, it's gonna get bigger, um, and the white is gonna get smaller, it's gonna shrink. And so like you can kind of see up here on her head, she's got a thumbprint and it's real tight. And so it's kind of squeezing together right here. And so this is gonna probably be all solid black across when she's an adult. Even this little white up here, little point that will probably be gone. Um, and she'll, it'll probably be close to a straight line right here. Um, but like this little dot, that will be gone. That spot will be gone when she's an adult. Um, this will probably be gone as will, this will be connected right there. Um, she'll probably still have this band, but it'll be a lot smaller. Um, that will probably connect a little bit. Um, her blaze, um, I think she'll still have her blaze as an adult, but it'll be very small. Um, it'll probably just be a very narrow line. Um, and then she has her color down her cheeks. That is one of my, like, my favorite cavalier markings is when their the color comes down their cheeks a little bit. I call it a donut nose because they end up with this white circle that goes around their snouts and it's really cute. Um, and so she's got those beautiful little brown cheeks. Um, and she's got it on both sides. So she's gonna have a donut nose. There's Miss Panda and her eyes are really close to opening. Um, this is how we can kind of gauge their dominance or how submissive they might be. Um, if our dogs are ever, <clears throat> you know, having trouble listening or following directions, um, we'll put them on their backs and do what we call a staring contest. 
Um, the whole purpose of that is because being on your back is a more vulnerable position and that eye contact, that direct eye contact is a challenge um, in the dog world. And so for us to um, stare them in the eyes, the, the dog should look away because you are more dominant than the dog and the more dominant party in the staring contest should outstare the other one. Um, and so like when our dogs are having a little bit of trouble listening um, and behaving, um, when we do the steering contest, they will um, usually be a little reluctant to look away. Um, but once we do that once, um, their behavior really really turns around. Um, but um, I really wish that I had a lot of like different things to share about each of them. But they're honest, they're so much alike that it's really hard to. All of them, like none of them are nipple stealers. They all share with each other. So if we approach her kind of like I did down here, she will kind of like work her way into our hands. And then she almost always nuzzles her nose between the pointer finger and the middle finger. And then she gets cozy just like this and gets cozy and she goes to sleep. Um, but that's one thing that we, we've noticed about this litter that's really incredible is just how much they prefer us. Um, I should say, not prefer us, but just in some situations, um, they will look past Myra and come to us for comfort. Like I said, that's a really important trait or characteristic to have when we're looking at them to be potential emotional support animals. Because as an ESA, when they're adults, they will be prioritizing their ESA handler. And so um, we need them to have a high affinity for people. We need them to, um, you know, those are just certain personality characteristics that they need to have in order to be a successful ESA. Um, <clears throat> and so those little personality characteristics, they are already showing. And so that tells us that whatever is driving um, those behaviors, is really ingrained, is really part of their personality. And so um, that's why we can comfortably say that they will make pretty good ESAs um, because they are just so people driven. Um, they love being um, snuggled and being comforted by us. Um, even when they don't need comfort or snuggles, they still, they'll still come over to us just for a little bit of attention. Before their eyes open, um, the other remarkable thing is just how, how much they want to be with us. And so like, they don't need to be in distress to want to hang out with us. Um, so she's vocal. <laughs> she, so she lets us know if something is wrong. Um, but she also, she is, um, she is so snuggly. She, uh, <laughs> you can see her getting comfy whenever we pick her up. Um, she usually nuzzles her head, usually between these two fingers. She has like a certain position that she um, gets into when we pick her up and then she'll go to sleep. Um, uh, you may have noticed that she was fussing and crying um, when I picked her up and it's pretty incredible that I brought Myra in here and um, she, Panda knows she's here. Um, usually they'll start swinging their heads around and wanna go hang out with mom um, naturally. Um, and so it, the, the fact that she's still happy, um, snuggled up in my hands, that tells us that, you know, she's not afraid of people. She's comfortable with people. See, there she goes. Um, she warms up to people really easily. Are you getting uncomfy? You snuggle with Rose there. I've got the petal. And so petal, you know, the same rule kind of applies with the the markings um, as the tricolors. Um, it just doesn't, the, the brown isn't going to expand as much as the black on the tricolor does. Um, but little Miss Petal here, she doesn't quite need it. <laughs> um, she's got so much chestnut on her back um, that given how much the chestnut will expand, um, I mean, so this spot right here she will probably have like a little bit <clears throat> a little bit of a leftover there but this one will probably be gone um and then this little line there that will that will go away that will all blend um and she might still have this band 
as an adult, but it'll be a lot smaller. Um, and then on her head, you can see she's got a few thumbprints going across right there. Um, and so this will all blend together as, as brown. Um, and then her blaze will narrow a little bit. It won't be as wide as it is now. Um, and the other marking that I just love about her is, um, like I said about Panda, she's got the chestnut coming down on her cheeks. And so her face is going to be pretty dark. She's going to have a, a more brown face. Um, Paris's, if you're familiar with Paris, our Blenheim ESA, she has a donut nose. And when she was a baby, her cheeks looked kind of like that. Um, Petal, Petal is another really, really great puppy she's gonna she'll also make a really awesome esa um oh my goodness oh my goodness oh my goodness oh my goodness oh but they are all so if i made this video three days ago i would have said like oh maybe rose not so much or maybe this puppy but in these last three days they've all really caught up with each other and so like even the differences and that's kind of what took a minute to get these videos out is that they're just changing so rapidly i didn't want to put out a video that talked about them being a certain way and then as it turns out they're all caught up and because I, I, five days ago four days ago i would have said that rose is um maybe not as people driven but that's totally wrong. She's like, scratch that. She has, you know, overnight her switch flipped and she is very much a people dog. Um, and she surprised us too with some eyeballs this morning. Here's Miss Rose. And so her markings, they're not going to really change a whole lot. Um, what we might see is just a little bit of a reduction in the white on her chest. And then we'll probably also see her chestnut lighten up a little bit. Um, on the black and tans, the chestnut um, is kind of like a highlight. And it kind of, it just like, it adds a little bit more dimension to, to their color. Um, but she is really soft. So all the puppies are soft, but she's got like something about her fur is just like a little bit extra soft. I don't know what it is. They're soft too, but it's just, I don't know, I can't explain it. Um, let's put her on her back and see how she does. There's Miss Rose. I like to give them little belly rubs. Hey, it's okay. It's okay, sweetie. Who's a pretty girl? Oh, and I think her lipstick that she's got, the little white on her mouth, um, I don't think that will go away. I think that will stay. Um, I know it's small, but Missy was actually born with a very similar soul patch right there. And um, she still has it. Um, this spot in particular doesn't really follow the regular rules that I talked about um, in terms of coloring. Um, usually whatever you see here is what you get um, as an adult. But she's also just a very chill. They're all very mellow. Um, and I'll compare, I'll talk about the boys a little bit too. And so we'll talk about a little bit of the differences. Um, but I would say that the boys might be um, like a touch bit more mellow than the girls. Ooh, you're such a good puppy. You're such a good puppy. Goodness, I need more hands. And Miss Rose, you like to snuggle, don't you? <laughs> She's like, not this morning. It's okay, Miss Rose. Hey, sweetie, it's okay. It's okay. You're such a good girl. Yes, you are. Oh, baby, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. You're a good girl. You are, you are. <laughs> Her eyes are open, I can't believe it. They don't usually open that much in one night. They usually start with like a little pinhole. 
Mm, you're such a good girl. They're all so well-rounded. Their potty training is going really, really well. Um, um, we've been potty training now for five days. So um, it's been it's been a few days and sometimes like I'll bring them over to the pellets and I don't even need to really do the stimulation. They'll just start going. And so <clears throat> that tells us that they are learning. Um, they're starting to associate the pine scent with pottying and um so i bring them over to the the pellets and just relax and go she'll lick us on the nose hi sweetie can i have a kiss <laughs> let's see if she wants to be with mama now um but even so mom is here and dogs have been barking and she's happy as can be <laughs> They're so vocal. They're so vocal. And Rose and Petal are very much the same way. I, w I wish I had more examples to to explain how they're different, but they're just so similar. So Petal might be a little bit bigger than the others, um, but it is still hard. It's hard to say when she's only two weeks old. Hi. Hi. I'm so sorry. I only have two hands. I'm so sorry. Your mom is supposed to be over here helping me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, sweet panda. So this is kind of like the behaviors that we're looking for is, um, you know, if we're nearby and we don't scoop them up, if they turn to us and give us a kiss, you know, lick us, or if they do what she just did where she comes over and hangs her head on my hand, um, you know, she's seeking comfort from me and not her mom, which is... <laughs> we usually don't see this at this age. Um, usually more like three and four weeks is when we start seeing that stuff poke through. Um, of these three girls, they all do that. Um, all do this sort of behavior. Um, they just, they're really drawn to people. Mommy, you're such a good mommy. Yeah. You're such a good mommy. Yes, you are. You're such a good mommy. Hey, what's the matter? <laughs> hey, sweetie. You're such a good mommy. Whenever we do a new experience with them, um, like right now we're out in the living room, they've never been brought out here before. And once we've been doing it for a little bit, it's like their brain gets a little overstimulated and so they'll start shaking a little bit. Um, it'll usually happen like the first time we FaceTime with their family, they'll get the shakes, um, but it's not a bad sign. It's actually a good sign because it tells us that they're taking in all the information and if they've been taking in all the information and they're not like freaking out or running away, I, I know they're crying, but this is kind of just normal, like mom's not with us, we're in a strange place sort of cry. But if they're really bothered by all of that new stimulation, they will let us know. They, they won't just sit here calmly and hang out. I'm gonna bring them a little bit closer so you guys can see. <laughs> oh, Mama Myra. Those good babies. They're just such good puppies. Um, everybody's eyes should be opening in the next couple days. Like I said, I mean, the if you're a family who is looking for an ESA, or even if you're just looking for a really good family dog, um, I always say that it's really hard to go wrong with a Cavalier, but... With this particular litter, it would be really hard to go wrong. And so we start with FaceTimes um, when they're three weeks old. So next week, we'll start with FaceTimes where we FaceTime families. Um, and we leave a little bit of time to give them time to adjust to their eyes first, because um, everybody's eyes are opening right now. And so we ask families to send us slept in t-shirts um, that we can wrap them in during FaceTime calls. And so we kind of let the USPS do their thing um, after reservations and give that a little bit of time um, so that we can get the t-shirts and maybe anything at your home that smells like your cat or your baby. Um, because then they can be exposed to that during the calls and um, start associating your face with your voice and your scent. Um, it makes such a big difference on pickup day. I pointed out at the beginning of the video that Panda always has her head between my pointer finger and my middle finger and there she is. <laughs> You're such good puppies. Yep. Oh, their breath. They smell so good. All right. Well, 
thank you so much for watching. I'm so sorry the time that it took to get this put together. Girls, you want to come here? But I hope that this has been helpful for you. If um, you have any more questions, please don't be afraid to send me a message, send me a text message. Um, I'm happy to answer them, but I will also, I'll pull out the boys so that we can talk about the boys. But I hope this has been a little bit helpful.